All right, so in this video, we're going to try to talk about how to uh, model a sampling distribution for a proportion. And unfortunately, the textbook in this chapter we're on uh, for the central limit theorem does a good explanation of the central limit theorem for means, but doesn't mention proportions. Uh, and we do need them because when we get to confidence intervals and hypothesis testing, uh, we do need to do proportions. And if you jump ahead to 8.3, you'll see a very brief uh, hand-waving of getting the formulas, uh, but it just isn't covered well. Um, so in order to do that, I think we should take a step back and just refresh or review the binomial distribution. So we did cover this earlier in the class, um, and um, specifically section 4.3 is, is a good way to review through that. And we're going to do this in the context of a problem, but what we want to keep in mind is that for these binomial probability distributions that they do end up being normal uh, in certain situations, and the mean uh, and standard deviation do have formulas that we'll, we'll modify. Uh, specifically, the mean is n times p, where n is the sample size and p is the proportion, and the standard deviation is square root of n times p times q, where q is 1 minus p. All right, well, let's give us a problem to work with here. Uh, so grab this problem from the practice set just to give us a context to work on. Uh, and it says that the proportion is 30%, right? the proportion of companies' orders from first-time customers. And the sample size is 135. Uh, and then we want to do some stuff. Uh, basically, we want to know the probability that uh, a sample proportion is greater than 0 0.37. So the, the clues are all here that we're working with proportions and not means, and that we're working with a sample and not an individual, right? So that means we need to use the central limit theorem, but we also need to do it for proportions. Let's just first set up the probability, uh, or sorry, the binomial distribution for this example. Uh, and so remember for that, you just need the proportion, which is P. And in this case, that's 30% or 0 0.30. And then you need the sample size, uh, which is N, and that's 135. And then you can set up a little table here like we did before for the probability distribution because it's a discrete distribution and x is the number of successes so again we have 135 orders we're looking at and anything from 0 to 135 of those could be from first-time customers so here we consider the number of orders that come from first-time customers ranging from 0 to 135. now it's a little long so i'm going to have Excel kind of auto-generate this. And there we go, 135. And then the probability for each one of those uh, is given by the binomial distribution, uh, where the number of successes is x, the number of trials is the sample size. I'm just going to 135. Well, we can do this and then uh, hard code it with those dollar signs. The probability of success is always the same. Oops. Um, probability of success is always the same. It's the proportion there. And then cumulative should be zero. All right, and then that's a, just a really small number. There we get our table. And then we want to get graph of this. Uh, and this one will do fine. Maybe that was fine there. All right. So you'll notice that the graph is a bell curve, right? It's a normal distribution. And as long as the values for n and p are uh, the right way, then this will be, right? As n gets really big, these tend to take on that normal shape. Um, now, we mentioned before that the 
the mean of this distribution should be n times p. Let's just verify that. So if I do n times p, I get 40.5, right? And you notice that right in the middle here, that's right at 40. So you can see right where the mean should be on this bell curve, and it's right about 40. And so 40.5 is sounds correct for that. Uh, now the standard deviation is square root of n times p times q. So square root of n times p. Remember, q is just 1 minus p. So I usually just do 1 minus p. And that's about 5. And you notice that the, the spacing that was used by Excel is just going by 5s, right? And so if you go out 1, 2, three standard deviations, right? That follows with the empirical rule where you basically get 99.9% .9 of this curve, right? So five is the correct standard deviation. I mean, we don't get to the very tail there and that's because it's 5.3. And so it would actually go a little further than 55, right? It'd be 56 or something. Um, so that fits as well. All right, now the problem with this is we wanna get a sampling distribution for the population proportion. And so we don't really want the 40.5. Uh, we actually want the proportion. Uh, now to get back to the proportion, so I want, my sampling distribution I want that to be the mean of that I want it to be a a proportion and so we would just use the population proportion there right I want that to be 0 0.3 or 30% and of course the way you get that is you take You take the mean and you would divide by the sample size, right? Mean divided by sample size gets you back to proportion. And so that 0 0.3 uh, is the, the value we're interested in when we set up this sampling distribution for the proportions. Uh, now, because we divided by n, right? that's the, the important thing here. Going from here to here, we we did mu divided by n to give us p. Uh, we need to do the same thing with the standard deviation. Now, the standard deviation formula is square root of n times p times q. So when you divide that by n, then you get something that has square root of n on the top and n on the bottom. Uh, and let's see, I think the easiest way to probably deal with that is to make n be square root of n squared. Right, square root and square cancel, so n equals square root of n squared. And then you can bring this all under one big uh, square root. And then you can use the properties of exponents, n over n squared would simplify to just an n on the bottom. So square root of p times q divided by n is actually the standard deviation we want uh, because we're shifting from 
a mean uh, to a proportion. So that's the standard deviation we'll use for the sampling distribution. And uh, that formula is in the vocabulary, right? So I have it listed here, square root of P times Q over N. Um, and then it's also included in, in this supplemental reading thing that I've provided for you. So the uh, population mean will be the population proportion uh, for the sampling distribution. And then the standard deviation is square root of P times Q over N. All right, so let's calculate that. Standard. So we do square root, and then it's uh, P times Q, which is one minus P, and then divide by N. And then that's all inside of square root. That uh, shifts us to the uh, sampling distribution for the proportion. So this proportion will actually be the mean of the sampling distribution, and then that's the standard deviation. All right, so we're now ready. I don't really need this anymore. We're now ready to use the sampling distribution information to solve a problem. So that was all just set up. And in general, you don't need to go through all that explanation and theory and stuff. You can just jump right to finding the sampling distribution parameters, right? The mean is the proportion, and then the standard deviation uses the proportion and sample size in that formula. Uh, then we treat it like we would any other normal distribution problem. And so it says, what is the probability that a sample proportion is greater than 0 0.37? So we want the probability that X is greater than 0 0.37. All right? And so we, of course, use norm dist for the normal distribution. And then the X value is the 0 0.37. The mean is the 0 0.3, right? The, the population proportion, that's the mean of our sampling distribution. The standard deviation of our sampling distribution we found there. We set this to one. Now, norm dist finds the area to the left, right? Which is the probability that X is less than something. Uh, since this one is X is greater than, uh, I do need to adjust this and, and do one minus that to switch over to area to the left. Uh, so let's just draw a quick picture to show what's going on. So we've got our, this is our sampling distribution and the mean is 0 0.3. And we're interested in over here where it's 0 0.37. And specifically, we want to know this area here, right? That's that's what we're after. Um, but if you just do the norm dist command by itself, right, that's giving you this area over here. Uh, and so you need to do the one minus trick uh, to get the area to the right. That should work to us. And it says, uh, 
number accurate to four decimal places. So we can have Excel do the rounding for us. Four decimal places should be in there. So 0 0.0380. Right. And problem solved. All right. So it's not that bad. Uh, you just need to adjust your standard deviation. It's a different formula from the mean. And then for the mean of the sampling distribution, just use the population proportion. Uh, and then treat it like any other normal distribution problem using that mean and standard deviation. All right. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, go ahead and try out those practice problems. Uh, this is the one that doesn't have a video, question 11. Um, but I have videos for the other ones that deal with proportions.